We tried the flexible diet. Here's what happened. But first, the flexible diet. What the hell is it? The flexible diet, also known as if it fits your macros, isn't so much of a strict diet as there's nothing off limits, but instead it focuses on you continuing to hit your set macros for the day. What are macros? They're short for macronutrients, which are fats, carbs, and protein. Almost everything you eat and drink is made up of some combination of the three, excluding water and alcohol. The big selling point of flexible dieting is you can eat whatever you want as long as it fits your macros. Benefits of the diet include the freedom to eat what you want and stay satisfied while also working towards goals such as leaning out or putting on mass. Drawbacks of the diet is viewing food only in a simple numerical sense and foregoing nutrient-dense foods containing valuable vitamins, minerals, and more while you focus solely on proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and little else. For the next 30 days, me, along with my brother Brandon, will be attempting to stay strict on the flexible diet while experiencing both the strengths and the weaknesses. Here we go. Wish us luck. Ugh. What would any food challenge video be without a grocery shopping segment? So we're at the grocery store now and we're gonna be checking out some foods. First things first, what can we eat and what can we not eat? Well, with if it fits your macros, you can eat anything. If it fits within your macros, it's fair game. So you see all this food in here, just think of it as a big macronutrient chart. You want your carbs, you want your protein, and you want your fats. So basically that's gonna dictate what you buy. So we're gonna check some foods out and uh, see what's gonna be on our shopping list. So now any nutritionist would probably say, go ahead and stick to the outside aisles. They're gonna contain your vegetables, your fruits, your grains, also your meats. So that's pretty much the basis of what you have to think about. It has your fats, has your carbs, and it also has proteins as well. What is those middle aisles? What do they contain? And can we actually have them within this diet? We're about to find out. Now, as you can see, the middle aisles will usually contain the pre-packaged stuff, some of the more processed stuff. You have your cereals, you have your granola, you have your breakfast bars, um, cookies, you know, your snacks, things of that nature. So you can really eat any of this with if it fits your macros, they say there's no, there's no such thing as bad food. Pretty much all the food is on the table as long as it fits in within your macronutrient ratios. One difficult thing if you go with any kind of sweets or prepackaged stuff or processed things that it can be very calorically dense and the volume of it can be pretty small. So it won't satiate you as much and you feel like you can eat more than you think you need. And all of a sudden, again, you're surpassing your macronutrient percentages and you know, then you're all off track. So that's another good thing about getting kind of like the singular ingredients. You can control not only your calories, but also your macronutrients as well. And you're going to be a lot better off. Ugh. All right, big boy, you ready to do this? Day one is underway for me, and this feels like a little bit of a homecoming. This is definitely not the first time that I have done flexible dieting, and in fact, I probably had my first experience back when I was around 18, 19 years old. Um, there's a very popular app nowadays called MyFitnessPal where you can easily track your calories and macros, but before that, it was done old school, and that was just either on a notepad or, as I had, a very early iteration of an app where you had to manually enter it into your computer, kind of like a Microsoft Excel kind of spreadsheet. So every day, you'd eat your food, you'd type it in manually into your computer, and then at the end of the day, you'd get your macros and calories. And this was a real eye-opener for me, because up until that point, I had a different perception of what eating healthy was. I just thought as long as you ate healthy foods, such as broccoli, chicken, uh, whole wheat bread, that would make you healthy, right? You'd get buff, you'd be lean. But my problem was I was just eating too much of those things. So I would have massive peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on bread a couple times a day, big protein shakes, just completely filled with sugar. And I was thinking, hey, I'm having lots of proteins, I'm having lots of whole wheat, this is gonna be my ticket to becoming a buff dude. But unfortunately, as you can see from the pictures, 
that wasn't really the case. And that was really frustrating for me because I thought I'm in the gym, I'm eating right, or at least I thought I was, why am I not reaping the reward I should be getting? And a lot of that for me was due to my macros. So when I finally had a chance to calculate it and I went with more moderate proteins and carbohydrates, a little bit lower fat, I saw results almost instantly. And that was along with keeping it consistent because that was another really important part. So now that the story time is over, it's time to figure out our macros. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. Something that I have used for years is a total daily energy expenditure calculator. You can find one online for free. And basically it gives you a rough estimate of how much calories you're burning off a day based upon your energy levels and also your recommended macro splits. Now this isn't a perfect program, but it's going to get you on the right track. And as you continue to do it over time, you're going to find out what works best for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out, grab some food and try to hit those macros consistently over the next 30 days. It is day five of this challenge and it's been going pretty damn good so far. Getting in the habit, getting in the swing of things, and it's getting a little bit easier. But of course, we still have 25 days left, but I'm ready to get this day started with some breakfast and then hit a good workout. So I'm just starting off the morning with some oatmeal. Now this meal is predominantly carbohydrate base, about 60% carbs, 20% protein, and 20% fats. A lot more carbohydrates. Uh, than the other two macronutrients. Pretty much kind of like a first breakfast. The second breakfast is gonna be a bit more fat and protein based with my eggs and my turkey bacon. I'll add a little bit of carbohydrates, maybe with an English muffin or so. And then after that, it is workout time. So I got enough fuel in the tank to hit it hard and feel damn good doing it. It's time to hit the gym. The first time I started to really understand how tracking and manipulating macros can be beneficial was when I competed in a bodybuilding competition at 19 years old and seeing the results I got from that really opened my eyes to what you can get out of paying close attention to the food you eat um, and more specifically the macros that the food contains. Now I took more of a trial and error approach back then, you know, I didn't use any calculators and I really didn't even know that there was such a thing and there's no real like food tracking apps or anything. So I feel like thankfully today it's a bit easier to find out what macros you need and not only what you need but also how to track them. Uh, back then I just had a, a piece of paper and a, a pencil and I would just you know track how many how much food I was having a day and that wasn't really that efficient you know because you really didn't get that specific with it. Today I kind of know what works best for me so I'm sticking with the 40% protein, 40% carbs, and 20% fat um, and that's going to be fitting in with the about around the 4,000 to 4,500 calories a day. Um, I am actually currently trying to put on a little size, so I'm going a bit over maintenance. And it's still a little bit of a struggle today. I mean, I feel like I'm still struggling to stay below my 20% fat. So I'm making small adjustments to make sure I'm fitting within my macronutrient percentages. And you know, it's not always gonna be perfect, but as long as you can get as close as you can and be consistent with it, then you're gonna get some damn good benefits. So I'm looking forward to the kind of fine tuning that's gonna go in the next 25 days and seeing what kind of results we can get. Like so many others, I had become a slave to the flexible dieting macro instinct. If I saw something scrumptious, like a gushy berry triple thirst dumper, or maybe a gulpy pulpy thruster clump. Even the Guadalupe chicken soup with an extra bloop of gloopy turtle poop. If it fit my macros, I had to have it. I'd look longingly through my cupboards and I no longer saw foods, just numbers. Each one a collection of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Pornography these days is so passe. Now it's engorged satiation of delectable edibles. Hashtag yummy. It is day 11 and I gotta say it takes a huge weight off your back when you can eat more or less whatever you want but you're within that macro range. And a thing that helps me like crazy is as I mentioned before, having an app where you can just scan the foods and you don't gotta stress out about it because you're doing it one at a time, they're slowly filling up and once you get to the end you know, hey, I've eaten as much as I should for the day, I'm satiated and I'm feeling great. And a little trick that I do is usually I'll scan the foods before I eat them. So let's say I'll scan one, there's a little bit more sugar than I'd like. Well, it's a good 
in way to just go, hey, I guess I won't be having that today because it's gonna throw me off my macros. So, so far so good. I'm liking how this is going and I think I can make it the next 20 days. Thanks. So, how's your flexible dieting going? It's going good. Hit my macros perfectly today. Mm -hmm. Everything is exactly where it should be. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. What happened? I swallowed some toothpaste. Like, like a huge gulp. So? <clears throat> so, do you have any idea what the macros and toothpaste are? Mm -hmm. Let me see the, where's the barcode on this thing? I can't scan it. I don't know, Google it. Okay, Google. How many macros are in toothpaste? Here's a result from search. Quit being a little paranoid bitch and just finish brushing your teeth. <laughs> it is day 20 and it is time to offer some critique of the flexible diet. When I first heard of it, it was under the moniker of if it fits your macros and it really just seemed like an excuse to me to basically eat whatever you want. Donuts, pizza, you name it, you can eat it as long as it fits within your macros. And the reason why the diet turned me off at first was it because it just seemed like anything goes and there's so much more to food than that. There's a lot more than just the fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. A lot of times with the carbohydrates, you have sugars, which can add up to astronomical numbers. So let's say you're having, you know, 150, 200 grams of carbohydrates a day. If 50% of that is coming from sugar, you're not getting the vitamins and minerals you need, that can really add up over time. And that's not something you necessarily see visually. So even though you're looking good, over the long period of time, you may not be feeling good. And that's something that I need to be careful of because I can easily slip into it. I just look at my phone, I scan the food, I say, hey, it fits my macros, and I go about my day. I could be slipping into not eating as many greens. As I said, not as many vitamin or mineral rich foods. So it's one thing you gotta look out for. Just because you're hitting it, you also wanna try to keep those whole healthy foods a staple of your diet. It's definitely interesting. Uh, it's an experience I'm still getting used to, for sure. They all definitely have their own unique personalities, to say the least. Uh, what's up? Protein's here. What's happening? What's going on? Is the games happening today? Are we working out? When are we working out? I gotta hand it to him. The dude is jacked. But sometimes I start to think that he only has one brain cell and that one brain cell is just only telling him to work out. I mean, he's constantly walking around saying things like gains this, gains that. Gains this, gains that. Gains, gains, gains. Oh, uh, gains. Gains, gains, gains. And I'm just like, <sighs> dude, there's more to life than working out. The single most important thing in life is working out. But he's a nice guy. Oh, what a beautiful day. I can't believe it. Best thing to start this day is a good run. God, oh God, I feel like I need to get some energy out. <sighs> Carbs, I mean, this dude is just a handful. He is just like a ball of energy. Oh, there you are. I'm looking everywhere for you. What are you doing here? It doesn't matter. What I did on my job is I figured out our itinerary for today. I mean, for example, he makes an itinerary for every single day down to the second. Who the hell does that? And what we got to do first is eat breakfast. Uh, unfortunately, we're falling a little bit behind, so we're going to have to take about 15 minutes to make breakfast and only 15 minutes to eat breakfast, because what happens is after breakfast, we're going to go in front on second jog. I know, you missed the first one. I'm sorry, it was a doozy. Well, the second one's going to be even better. Yeah, yeah, last but not least, we got fats. Huh? And unlike carbohydrates, he is on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Hey, fats. I got dishes in the sink, trash in the trash can from five days ago. What the hell are you doing? Oh shit, the trash? I mean, he is just laying around all day when I have dishes piling up, when I have trash in the trash can that needs to be taken out. And whenever I go over to him to ask to lend a hand, he just gives me this bullshit about needing to conserve energy. You know, I'm kind of conserving energy right now. And I'm saying, for what? Conserving energy for what? Oh shit when I gotta use it. <laughs> you don't do anything all day but lay on the couch. <sighs> I'm just really hoping that, you know, maybe we can work something out soon because it's been tough. All in all, I've realized that there's a healthy balance in these three macros. Protein for whenever I need to go to the gym and get a good workout in. Easy, easy web. <laughs> you wanna have some protein after this? 
carbs for when I need that extra energy throughout the day. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, slow down! <laughs> and fats for whenever I just need to rest and recover. Hey! Hey, what's up? Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my roommate? Yeah, she's a total bitch. Oh yeah, it is day 25. And it's feeling pretty damn good, gotta be honest. Energy levels are high, workouts been going good. You know, the eating's been consistent, and uh, it's probably one of the easiest challenges thus far. It's not very restricting at all. Basically, have whatever you want, as long as it fits in within your macronutrient percentages. And I've really been trying to hit that every day, and it's been getting better and better as each day progresses. So, in comparison to some of the other diet challenges, wow. I felt depleted, I felt tired, I felt lethargic. And this one, in comparison, I don't feel any of that. And, you know, I gotta say, keto, carnivore, intermittent fasting, a lot of those ones revolved around calorie restriction for the most part and you know that really affected me quite a bit not only restricting just calories but also certain macronutrients like carbohydrates increasing ones like fat and protein and my body just really didn't react very well to that so i think for me personally having a healthy balance carbohydrates fats proteins and you know really choosing the percentage that works best for you and allowing yourself to be able to choose that, I think is very beneficial. And has definitely helped me out a lot. Out of all the diet challenges, which one would you actually prefer? Because you actually haven't joined me on any of them yet. No. Even though I've tried to get you on them, but it's been a no-go. <laughs> Probably say carnivore. That seems interesting. Carnivore, wow. I actually I love didn't expect that. Meat. Oh shit. I'm loving it. And we're almost done with this, so we've got five more days. Just getting a good workout tonight. And then uh Go home, that's good food. It is day 30 and it's time to offer my verdict. As I said earlier in the episode, this isn't the first time I've tried the flexible diet and I gotta say, I'm back on it again because I am a fan. What I love about it is it's not necessarily a strict diet where things are being taken away. You're still able to eat what you usually would. You just have to stay within a certain calorie and macro range. You can do it if you're a vegan, paleo, what have you, it doesn't matter. As long as you're hitting those macros, you're good to go. So if you're trying to lean down, if you're trying to add muscle mass, this is an excellent way to do it because it just shows you what you're having a day. And also, as with anything, if you stay consistent with it, you're gonna see results. So some of my small criticisms would be you don't wanna slip into just seeing foods as proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. There's more to them than that. But as long as you keep those whole healthy foods as a part of your diet, you keep within your macro range, I would definitely say this one is a flex. Yeah. Day 30, we made it. Now I have to be honest, when I first heard of if it fits your macros, I thought it was a little bit of a lazy way to get your nutrition in. Eat anything you want as long as it fits in within your macros. Now on the surface, that could be used as an excuse to have donuts or cookies or any other sweets you wanna indulge yourself in. But once you kinda of get past that and dive a little bit deeper, you have whole real foods and you start tracking them, weighing them out and you're consistent with it, you soon find out how beneficial that can be. It keeps you accountable, helps you stay on track, and it really shows what works and what doesn't and you're able to adjust accordingly to make sure you're getting the most out of your foods. So I'm gonna have to give this a flex. Oh yeah. There we go, dudes and girls. Hope you enjoyed the episode and recommend the next diet challenge you'd like us to tackle. I'm gonna be following this one up immediately by trying out a bodybuilding competition diet. That means chicken, broccoli, rice, and maybe shaving some body hair and getting a fake tan in the process. I'm logging all of it on the blog. You can find it in the description below where I'm listing all the workouts I'm using, my calories, my macros, and my journey because it's not an easy one. So follow along, look for that episode soon, and until next time, stay buff.